Why, hello, eighth graders. So um, again, because my PowerPoint is acting up and uh, IT can't seem to figure out why, uh, this is 2.4, at least not for this year, it's 2.8 um, types of solutions. Um, so there are, because I just have examples, so we're going to talk here on this slide. There are three types of solutions. We've already been working with one type, right? There's our one solution. And that's where we get x equals, you know, 4 or v equals negative 10, right? We're ending up with the variable equals a number. All right, so one solution, we have variable equals a number. Like I said, this is what we've been working with. What we're going to introduce today is no solution and infinite solutions. Now, a no solution doesn't make sense. Or isn't true. So that would be like 2 equals 4. Or 3 equals 0. Notice, though, there are no variables here. And in infinite solutions... Uh, or infinitely many solutions makes sense, but again, doesn't have a variable. So that would be like 2 equals 2, or negative, whoop, negative 4 equals negative 4, or 0 equals 0. But again, notice in all of these examples I give you, there are no variables. So basically what we're going with today is what happens and how do I decide how many solutions if my variables cancel each other out. Okay, so let's go to our first example. All right, so here, remember our steps when solving multi-step equations, our first step is to look for whether or not we need to uh, use distributive property uh, or are there like terms to combine? So in this case, we have distributive property, right? Parentheses with a coefficient in front. So we're going to distribute that 3. So that's going to be my first step is to distribute. And so then 3 times 2 is 6G. And 3 times 4 is 12 equals 6G plus 9. And then uh, we always went for, I always go for moving variables first. And part of that is just because then right away I know whether I have variables or don't have variables. So I have a positive 6g that I'm going to move to the other side. So to move it across the equal sign, uh, it has to change signs. And so we're going to subtract 6g from both sides. And what happens is this 6g goes away and this 6g goes away. So we're left with 12 equals 9. There are no more g's. g went away, right? And so then even right here, I know 12 does not equal 9. So this does not make sense. And because it does not make sense, that means there is no solution. And... I don't know who, like, someone said at one point, someone taught students that this is the empty set. Well, don't do that, because that's how Mrs. Cartwright writes zeros. So you know the difference between a zero and a, an O when we're writing things. So, again, no shortcut. Write no solution. It's really not that hard to write no solution. And then you're over. And especially on Math Excel, you're, it's like choosing infinitely many or no solution. So um, 
but that's how we get no solution. 12 does not equal 9. Um, the other thing that could have happened, if you would have subtracted first, then you would have ended up with, um, what, that would be like 3 equals 0, or negative th 0 equals negative 3, something like that, uh, by the time you got to the end. So those are just, either way, it still does not make sense. And if it doesn't make sense and there are no variables left, it's a no solution. All right, so here's our next one. Uh, in looking at it, I see that there are no parentheses, so I'm not going to be doing the distributive property. But I do see that I have a 9 and a negative 2 over here, and a 1p and 3p on this side. So my first step for this one is that I'm going to combine like terms. So... I'm going to put my 4p in front. Uh, 4p and then 9 minus 2 is 7. So we have 4p plus 7 equals, and then 1p plus 3p is 4p plus 7. And if I subtract 4p from both sides, right, to get the p's to one side, well, my p's go away, because 4 minus 4 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, we're left with 7 equals 7. Or if you subtract it, we'd get 0 equals 0. Right? Either way, it makes sense. 7 does equal 7. I still don't have a P, though, right? But 7 does equal 7. And so since this makes sense, we have infinite the many There we go. Solutions. So again, infinitely many solutions makes, you know, the number on the left equals the number on the right. No solutions, the number on the left does not equal the number on the right. And what, and so basically, what does this mean? What does no solution mean? What does infinitely many solution mean? When you get to there it is. When you get to this line here, if you noticed, we had 4p plus 7 on both sides. And so what that means is it doesn't matter what p I put in, right? I, p could be 2. p can be negative 100. p can be negative 1,242. p could be 0. 0.000003, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be equal on both sides of the equal sign because they are the same expression on both sides of the equal sign. They are the exact same expression, so it doesn't matter what P is, it's going to come out to be the same. Uh, with no solution, I'm going to go back so that you can see this no solution one. No matter what I would plug in for G, the left side is not going to equal the right side, because those are expressions are not equivalent expressions in, by any means. And so we're trying to piece two non-equivalent expressions together and try to get a solution, and we're not going to. Uh, if these were lines that we were graphing, which that will come later, but if these were lines that we were graphing, these lines would never touch. And we'll get to, to what all that means at a different time. But main thing... If the left does not equal the right and there's no variable, it's a no solution. If the left equals the right and there is no variable, then there are infinitely many solutions. That is all that I have for you today, 8th graders. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. This is our last lesson of this chapter, so um, we'll get to start a new chapter soon and get to continue our work through pre-algebra, and I can't wait. All right. Peace out, eighth graders.